Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Hey, in this video, what we're going to be talking about is why the vertex is negative b over 2a and then f of negative b over 2a. How does that work? Now, this is the third part in our series on quadratic equations. If you're a student and you're learning this and you'd like to have some guided notes, you can grab those. They are going to be linked in the description down below. So go ahead and pause it, grab those, print them off, and get ready to learn. It's going to help you to organize your thinking and have it available for future reference, okay? Now, our goal here for this lesson is we're going to be taking a look visually, a geometric approach to where that formula comes from. And the idea is that if you can understand where it comes from, you can understand all kinds of other things about, well, parabolas and other graphs and geometry, and it's going to help you make connections and all that kind of good stuff. But if all you're looking for is a step-by-step -step how to use the formula, you need that practice with the procedure, I'll put a link to that in the description for you as well. All right? Now, standard form, it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and this is the formula, negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. That's a coordinate, x comma y. How does that work? Where does it come from? It's pretty ugly. Can we visualize it? Can we see where it comes from? That's what we're going to do in this video. Now, before we dive into that, I do want to make one little note. Standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. If we have a leading coefficient of a, it gets really ugly to write. So what we're going to be doing is, in all cases, we're going to divide everything by a, giving us this situation right here. Now, that in itself is an example of my favorite oxymoron. That's pretty ugly right there. So instead, we're just going to write x squared plus bx plus c, understanding that if we take care of the a, we're going to have a new situation. But b over a is still the coefficient of x, and the constant is still c over a. And we could substitute those things in if we needed later. It won't really matter at all either way. It's just cleaner to look at. All right, so all that behind us, let's go ahead and dive in. Let's see if we can make sense of this, right? Now, we're talking about parabolas, of course, right? Parabolas are pretty cool little things. Uh, when they're graphed, when you graph a quadratic equation, that's what they make is a parabola, of course, and they're symmetrical. That dotted line you see right there in the middle, well, that's the line of symmetry. And every single pair of points that's a horizontal pair is equal distance from that line right there. So if we put a point M, it would be exactly in the middle of P and Q. So let's let's unpack that a little bit, see what that has to do with x squared plus bx plus c, shall we? So let's go ahead and pause our, our picture right here, and we'll have P on one side, Q on the other side, M is in the middle, they're all lined up. The way this works, that midpoint is called M. Now the reason we know it's the midpoint is because that line of symmetry is exactly in the middle of P to Q, right? So M to P is the same as M to Q. It's right in the middle. And the midpoint formula is you take the two endpoints, X1 plus X2 divided by 2. Well, in this case, X1 is P, X2 is Q. So for our situation here, P plus Q divided by 2 is going to be equal to M, right? So let's go ahead and tuck that away. Now, Line of symmetry, well, that's x equals m. x equals the numbers of vertical lines. So we'll go ahead and label that right there so we have it for future reference. All right. So now we know that there are two values that are true for our equation, x squared plus bx plus c, right? We know that one value is x1 equals p, and the other one is x2, the other x equals q. So if I actually took this and I subtracted p, I'd get x1 minus p equals 0. And over here, if I did it with q, I'd get x2 minus q equals 0. So let's go ahead and do that, right? Let's see here. I'm going to subtract p from both sides, subtract q from both sides, and look at that. Now, if we multiplied those two things together, that's where our quadratic equation comes from. If you know how to solve a quadratic by factoring, we're doing that backwards, right? So now let's multiply this together. x times x is x squared. Right On the outside, you get negative q times x. On the inside, you get never negative p times x. And the last two, negative p times negative q is plus pq. Right? Now, let's go ahead and put it in alphabetical order. It's just a little cleaner. And what we're going to do next is we're going to factor out a negative. They're both negative. We're going to fa factor out a negative. Let's go ahead and do that. And now, see if we distributed that that negative right there, it'd all be the same. And now let's go ahead and factor out an x. So we have our coefficient of x is negative, the quantity p plus q. 
Now, the reason we did all that is we want to relate this x squared minus p plus qx plus p times q. We want to relate that to x squared plus bx plus c. We can see the coefficient of x is that. So b is negative the quantity p plus q. c is the quantity p plus q, p times q, I mean. So we now know that for this situation, this is how we hit it. This is what we have, right? All right, now that's pretty cool right there. Now we know the midpoint is P plus Q, and we know that B is almost equal to P plus Q. In fact, if I multiply both sides of B equals this by negative 1, like this, then I'd have an expression that equals P plus Q. So I can go ahead and substitute B right there. So the midpoint is negative B over 2. Now remember that side note? that if we had a leading coefficient that wasn't 1, we were going to go ahead and just divide everything by A. So B is really B over A, right? We just didn't want to write that every single time. So let's go ahead and put that back. So negative B over 2A. That is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And it's also the equation, x equals negative B over 2A. That's the equation of the line of symmetry. That's pretty cool right there, right? Yep, yep. All right, so now the question is, where does that y come from? When does that point m become the vertex? Well, let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk about the basics. Like, if you have a point on your graph, x comma y, right? Well, x is the input, y is the output. The value of y is a function of x. That's why we write f of x. So what we really do is we just replace x with this x right here with whatever the value is. So let's go ahead and move this down to our vertex right there. We know that here, x is equal to the midpoint, negative b over 2a. So we're just going to plug that value in to the function. And so what we do is we take negative b over 2a, that's the x value, and then we plug it in. That's what that ugly thing means right there. It's pretty nasty to look at, but it's not really that much. Negative b over 2a, that's a simple calculation. Then all you got to do is plug that in, and boom, you're done. So the reason that this is the vertex, well, negative b over 2a, that's the midpoint of any pair of horizontal points. Any pair of horizontal points are going to have a midpoint that's this. That's also the line of symmetry. So all you got to do is take that value, plug it in for x into the original equation, and simplify it, and you know the y. So that's the x, the midpoint. You plug the midpoint into the function, find the y, boom, you're done. I think that's a pretty cool situation we got right there. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that kind of stuff. If you like doing math for fun, I've got a weekly math for fun problem on my Substack. I've got a website, all kinds of good stuff there for teachers. In the meantime, hope you have a great day.